Hello gin lovers and welcome back to another episode of No Nonsense Gin Reviews with me, Bobby Freeman. Now then, what is this suspicious looking fella here I hear you say? Is it Gordon's? No, it's not. You'd be forgiven for thinking that because it does look not dissimilar to the old Gordon's, which I don't like very much. However, this little chap, ladies and gentlemen, let me introduce to you Oliver Cromwell Gin. Now, I see a few of you are still scratching your head, so let me explain a little bit further. This is produced and distilled by a, uh, a German branded supermarket called Aldi. Now they're all over Europe and all over the UK and they're a budget supermarket if you don't know about them. I don't think they're in the US yet. Um, very similar to Lidl because I um, reviewed a Lidl uh, gin in one of my other videos. Uh, Aldi also have their own gin and um, this has been making quite a few ripples on the gin circuit I believe. Now let's pop in there for a second. So. The, uh, what have we, what have we got here? The Oliver Cromwell gin, right, okay, yeah. So it, it's won many, many awards, this gin, including beating off uh, the age-old uh, competitors of Gordon's, which seem to have be absolutely everywhere and cornered the market for some strange reason, despite not tasting very nice. And it even beat off my good old favorite, the Beef Eater. Where, where's it gone? There's a strawberry one up there. I've got another one around here. There's always Beef Eater in my house. So yeah, this beat Beef Eater in the taste test, in the blind taste test competition. So I, would, I wouldn't I would usually have tried this gin, but I tell you what, that is something to make you stand up and listen. And the very best thing about this gin, this is incredible. So it's beat off those all those really, really good gins, or very, very popular gins. Um, this, my friends, let me read you something here. The Oliver Cromwell gin um, is priced at a pocket-friendly £9.99. Can you believe that? I, I'm, I'm just, I'm slightly stunned at that. This is under... 10 pounds okay i always say you should never spend more than 30 pound on a gym well i'll tell you what you don't even need to spend 10 pound on a gym with this and get a really good gin you're not taking a dip in quality this is absolutely incredible it's, it's really exciting actually as well i think other gin companies need to sit up and listen when you've got gins like this with this sort of accolade uh priced at a third of your price you need to definitely uh take note i think so it was um was also here we go it was awarded a gold medal at the international spirits challenge which i assume is the highest accolade uh, it's beating well off well, beating off well-known rivals like gordon's and beef eater to the prize and then according to aldi the supermarket that makes it they describe it as this uh it's the this winning spirit is a clear light crisp gin with rounded spice and a touch of juniper i always like to have a touch of juniper in, 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 every, in anything i do in life uh, it's traditionally distilled, and it also has a zesty flavour to complement the classic tonic mixer. Wow, I think we, I think we've done quite enough talking about this. I'm very excited to try this one. Uh, I, although there's not much left in there, my girlfriend has been drinking this. I haven't actually tried this yet, but I, she assures me it's very, very nice. So let's hope it lives up to the hype, shall we? I've hyped that up quite a lot. Oh, this is a very, it's, it's, um. It's what you call your standard gin flavor, but there's definitely something delicate going on. You can get the peppery tones to it, that coriander, that's definitely in there, which is always important in gin, but as I always say, you don't go overboard with. There's like a freshness to it, almost kind of, almost kind of a touch of apple or something, maybe like that, a real sort of fresh fruitiness to, fruitiness to it, which I've not, smelt before in a gin. Anyway, let's not get too bogged down in the sniffing. As you know, it's, I'm not a big fan of that. Stick them in there. I've not got much tonic left here, so let's make a, quite a small one. Don't want it too strong. There we go. It's about perfect, I think. Right, let's give it another sniff now it's, it, now it's been introduced to the tonic. Oh, it's definitely watered it down a bit, but there's... Yeah, the flavour is still there. The aroma is still there, but they, there's just... It's not giving me any more, so let's just get it in the mouth, shall we? Let's not let's stop fanning around it. So, oh, blimey, that's strong! Oh, I poured a strong one there. Let me pop a bit more in there. -hoo 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 -hoo. Good lord! Oh, that's made all the difference. Blimey. Okay, don't worry. I'm running out of tonic. I'll get another one for the next video. So, good lord, that is a strong. But I tell you what, wow, wham, bam, that is. Oh, it's so fresh and just sort of light and 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 um, it's very original. It's quite delicate flavours. You've definitely got the hint of pepperiness just poking through there. But there's, the, as I say, with the aroma, there's a freshness. It's like a burst of, and I am. I don't know if I'm. I, I've never known gin with apple before, but there's definitely kind of a that lovely um, sort of burst 
of um, refreshing sort of uh, quality that an apple that you get from biting into an apple. I, I, I think there's something, there's definitely a, something like that in there. Let me have another quick. Oh, it's lovely, but you get the zestiness coming through as well, like they say. All gin should be a bit zesty, I think. But mixed with this unique, fresh kind of appliness. I don't know if I got that right, but I'm sure that's what I'm getting from it. It's really nice. It's really, really nice. It's not like wham, bam, uh, exciting new um, pushing forward uh, barriers, you know, sort of breaking frontiers gin. But it's it's nice to have a, just a, a few good staple gins, which are just good gins. And this is absolutely brilliant. I wouldn't be going so overboard on it if it wasn't for the fact that it is the price is so good because this is incredible. Because if you're on a budget, this means you don't have to. You, I've said to you before, you don't have to be buying the likes of Gordon's or Bombay Sapphire, which aren't very good, although they're everywhere. There is a lot of choice out there for every single budget. And my friends, if um, if you're on a bit of a budget, but you like a gin and tonic, I tell you what, you need to... Let me hit it with a pen to express how much I... This little fellow, you need to get some because it's absolutely brilliant. And at that price, why wouldn't you? You could always keep some in stock, you know, just for uh, when you run out. If, if, even if you prefer the fancier gins, you like the more sort of higher end stuff. Why not keep one of those in stock in case, you know, just in case, I don't know, someone breaks in and burgles all your gin. Um, the likelihood of that is probably very low, but you never know these days. There might be a market for um, black market gin. But uh, anyway, we might explore that in another channel. But anyway, ladies and gentlemen, I think I've talked enough about this gin, but we like this very, very much. That's excellent. So I would say get yourself down to Aldi if there's one near you. Get yourself some Oliver Cromwell gin. Get it on your shelf because this is excellent at a brilliant price. Right, ladies and gentlemen, that is Oliver Cromwell gin. This is No Nonsense Gin Reviews, and I'm Bobby Freeman. I will see you next time. Thank you very much. Bye-bye. Oh,